So yeah, Moza just sent us one of their recent products, which is the Slypod E. What exactly is this thing? Well, you can make it out from the name itself, Sly coming from a slider and Pod from a monopod. Plus, it's motorized, and Moza says that it's the world's first 2-in-1 slider slash monopod. Okay, but fancy titles aside, how does this thing work and how good is it overall? First of all, why would anyone want a slider in 2020? I'm asking this question because I believe gimbals have improved so much in the recent years that anyone could grab one and get a stable shot, whether that's a quick orbiting shot, a tracking shot, or even a slow pan. But actually, there are a couple of things that gimbals can't do, but a slider can. First is movement for macro shots, which is simply impossible to do with a gimbal, no matter how good your ninja walk is or how steady your hands are. And as you can see right here, the slypod can do those shots with ease. Also gonna mention that besides the terrible noise this thing makes, it is really, really solid. The build quality is excellent in my opinion. Nothing rattles or jiggles around. It's really well built. Second, with a motorized slider, you can add movement to your time lapses, which might not seem like a big deal, but if done right, it can bring your time lapses to the next level and give them a professional quality. It's so subtle, but at the same time, so satisfying to watch. Now, I'm not saying that a slider shouldn't be used in a simple scenario like this, because this subtle movement can really change what the viewer is thinking and where he is paying attention. Take a look at these three shots. Now you might not even realize, but these shots are very different from each other. In this example, the tripod shot has no guidance where you should look. Like, which one is the main subject? The fireplace, the corridor in front, or the window right here? The gimbal shot, on the other hand, feels like a tour. We are exploring this place and that brings up a couple of questions for the viewer. Will we go straight and explore the corridor, or go around this corner and see what's on the left? Or maybe we will suddenly pan to the right and check out this table. Now, with the slider shot, shot everything is clear. We know that this area is the main focus and now we are not asking where but what? What is there? Is there something that we haven't noticed yet? Or is there something that we're gonna see in just a few moments? As you can see, the slider shot has the most mystery to it because it's slow paced and doesn't rely on any gimmicks like fast, crazy camera movements, transitions and that sort of thing. It brings up questions, creates mystery and tension and I love that. Next, why would you want a slypod instead of a typical slider? Well, the main advantage of the slypod is its size and weight. It's about the size of my tripod, making it travel friendly, so portability and mobility is really on point here. Then, also being a monopod, although I wouldn't really call it like that since it's just like too short. But yeah, it can do two extra movements that you cannot do with a typical slider. So you can do up and down movements like this, or point the camera down and make it slide forwards or backwards. Nice. The design is probably my least favorite part about the Slypod because it looks too gamer-ish, like RGB lights, really. Of course, it's personal preference, but in my opinion, it just doesn't look like a professional tool. Now, the battery life is two hours, which is not amazing. However, you can plug a power bank and continue shooting. And when me and Gunders went to the woods to get all this footage, we used it quite intensively and sometimes left it idling for like 30 minutes straight. And after about three hours of shooting, ended up with 50% battery. So for me, the battery life is not an issue. Now the max payload is 4 kilograms for horizontal movements and 9 kilograms for vertical movements, which is quite nice. Now the app which you can use to control the slypod is actually really, really good. It's super simple and took me just a second to understand everything and I usually hate using these apps, they really must be good in order for me to like it. But with this one the only complaint I have is when you exit the app, 50% of the time it loses connection. Anyway, you can drag the slider to go from point A to point B and you can even select the time it takes to complete a movement, which is super handy for time lapses. All right, so I'm gonna show you how easy it is to set up a time lapse with the Slypod. So you go into the application, you hit uh, the Slypod, connect it, literally takes just two seconds. It's quite amazing. Select creative video, select your start and end position. I don't know why it, why it does that, but you hit confirm, set a timer. So if I'm doing a picture every three seconds, if I need a five second material, it's roughly 10 minutes of, uh, I need 10 minutes from it to go from here to here. So I'm gonna set 10 minutes. Boom, there you go. Hit confirm, confirm, and start. Confirm, it's gonna return to zero. You have to just enjoy this uh, nice noise it makes. That's how $300 sound like. And it is starting, and I'm just gonna hit my remote here. Boom, and that's it. 
super easy, love it. And you can also control the slide pod using these buttons right here. So you can use it without the app, which is nice, but the app is so responsive and easy to use that I'll stick to using that instead. The only complaint about the buttons is that they don't work when the app is connected to the slide pod, which is a weird choice, but doesn't bother me too much. So the final question is who is the slide pod for? Well, as a slider, it is honestly perfect in my opinion. It's stable, it's easy to use, doesn't require too many tools and accessories. It's quite small and compact, making it perfect for traveling. The only downside is that the distance in which you can operate is quite small, coming in at only 28 centimeters, and the noise is just ridiculous. So forget about using it for interviews and shots where audio is necessary. But honestly, these things do not bother me that much. So I think the Slypod is the perfect option for product videographers and really enthusiastic time-lapse shooters, because in this category, the Slypod is really just excellent. However, if you are a run-and-gun type of shooter, I'd rather just stick to my gimbal and save a ton of time because when using the slide pod, it can take about a minute or two or even three to just set it up and get this one shot. Because finding good compositions is harder when you have less movement. But that's one of the reasons why using the slide pod was such an interesting experience for me. Because the focus is 100% on the cinematography itself. No bullshit and no gimmicks. And trust me, it's a lot harder than you think. When you pick up a gimbal for the first time, you really just need to know how to balance it properly and walk straight. But with less movement, you need to pay more attention to your framing. Now, if if you consider buying the slide pod, you need to have a good tripod. Trust me on this one. If you have a flimsy, low quality tripod, which is hard to adjust and it's just not smooth, you will hate, absolutely hate using the slide pod. Where we went out to shoot in the woods, I took a pretty small tripod, which was a bit rusty, was hard to adjust the height and everything. And I honestly just wanted to go home so badly and throw this in the towel. Now there is nothing wrong with the slide pod itself. It's just a tripod. So make sure you have a good one. It's very important. So that's all I have to say for now about the Moses slide pod. I do think it's a good product and worth the money. You just need to ask if you really need a slider for your videos. If you are doing tech videos or shoot products, get it. If you do travel videos, maybe don't get it. If you're doing short films, get it. And you know the drill. Peace out. Mm -hmm.